before you get real far in, let's talk a little bit about the console itself. So if we open just a new Google Chrome window, and we go to about blank, we can then go into developer and bring up the JavaScript console. Now we don't have to be at about blank. We could have done it on the other page, uh, but there's a couple things I want to talk about first. So I prefer the JavaScript console in Chrome versus some of the others. Uh, this one has a few features that I like a little bit better. Um, one of the things that I do like is you can actually type directly into the console itself, where some of the others, depending on which which browser you're looking at, you can't. Some of them it just it just shows stuff related to whatever page you're on. Now, if you're not sure what I mean, new tab, and view the JavaScript console here. All right, there we go. So we're getting a few interesting issues here. It's, it's popping up a few errors. Uh, it's having a hard time loading these these previews. And so it's, it's saying that here. It can't find these thumbnails that fit inside of these little boxes. So that's one of the things you can do with the console is you can view issues that might be occurring on your page. Now with your console, you've got a lot of stuff up here and I don't really want to go into those right now. Let's talk about those a little bit more later once you're a little bit more familiar with JavaScript and a little bit more familiar with how the console log works. If you click this little gear, you have settings. And so you have a variety of things here that you can see if you like. None of them are really that important, in my opinion, right now for you going right in, but it's good to know where they are. You have workspace, and you can add folders to this if you want. You have devices, and all those things we can talk about later, but you also have shortcuts, and this might be important to you. If some of the things that I'm doing don't work for your machine, maybe you're on a PC instead of a Mac, you can find your shortcuts here to see what you might need, what you're looking for. You can also change this too. If you prefer the console down here, you can do it there. If you prefer split screen, you can have it that way as well. So that's that's up to you. That's your choice. And you have a drawer here, which I'm not going to go into right now, but you get the idea. Now, when working through this, it's really easy to type one line of code, like hello. However, if you press shift enter instead, it won't execute that line. Instead, it will let you write a new line. If for some reason you're having a problem with that, and it's actually executing it anyways, and it's not giving you a, a new line, you have two choices. Or I guess three. Uh, one, you can go into your shortcuts and try to figure out what's going on. Two, you could actually write it without a line break because white space in JavaScript actually doesn't matter. It matters for the reader. I mean, it's much easier to read when you start new commands on new lines, but as far as JavaScript is concerned, it's fine. It will still run it. The other option would be to open up something like text edits and you can type multiple lines there. without having to worry about accidentally running your code. And then I could copy this and paste it there. And there we go, to alerts. So any of those work. It's just up to you to decide what works best for you. Um, normally when I'm working on this, I like to have this pretty large so you can really see what I'm doing. Uh, however, I had made it smaller on this one because if I do settings with it that zoomed in, that's not very useful. And I can also drag this out if I wanted to, so I could view the settings that way. And I guess that works too. But it eats up a whole lot of room then. So there you go. There's a few things about the console, and hopefully that will make following the first couple exercises with JavaScript a little bit easier.
Now, something important to mention, if you're using something like Google Docs or, or Word or Apple Pages to write your JavaScript for the console, there's something to keep in mind. All right now, the console is only taking plain text, plain characters. So you don't really have to worry about like different font types or different font sizes or some of those hidden codes creeping in there and messing up your code the same way you might trying to write it for like CSS or JavaScript or something else, trying to write it directly and, and running it and saving it and all that stuff as actual .css's or .js's or .html's or whatever. But just for example, let's say that you want to do console.log and running js, right? We'll just, we'll just put that, that's fine. And uh, let's say you want the second line to be alerts js is running. Okay, so one in the console log and an alert as well, right? And so if we run this, it worked fine, right? Okay. Now, if shift enter isn't working for you for whatever reason, and you've tried fixing Chrome, you've tried uploading Chrome, and you've just decided whatever, I'm just going to use Google Drive, that's fine. Just be aware, when you type in Google Drive, you might run into some problems. So let's, let's just go ahead and retype this out. All right, so font size doesn't matter, so I can make this big, and it will be fine. So console.log, quotation marks, alert, JS is running. All right, so if I take this and I want to copy and paste it now, put it in there. All right, so we're ready, right? So we press enter, and it doesn't work. It says unexpected token, and uh, what's going on, right? It just worked. Why isn't it working now? And we've got this little error code here, and we can click on that, and uh, that'll open this thing, and we can look at this and make it bigger. And uh, we're on about blank. Here's uh, here's what we wrote. Hmm. We can open that back up. I don't like how it looks there. Uh, let's do it this way. There we go. I like that a little bit better. Okay. So we've got this on the horizontal instead of the vertical. And we've got the drawer open as well, which allows us to see the console at the same time as the error code. If you're using a version of Google Chrome that you've updated fairly recently, you should have this over here too. And this is helping you. It's telling you what line to look on. And if you click on it, it will actually even highlight it up here for you. And it's saying that this is the error. What about it? What's wrong with it, right? If it was something easy, if it was just like, hmm, I'm going to copy and paste this up here because that one worked and we knew that one worked and we knew why. Alright, so if we're running something easy like this and, and we miss something easy like that and we run it, we get, actually it did it for us, it fixed it for us. So let's say we make an easy mistake, right? So maybe we forget like this parenthesis and we run it. And so we get uncaught syntax error unexpected string. And if we click on this error code here, our error re, uh, well, it's, it's actually opened a new little file for us. And we still have our other error here and we can see this error here. And this one's pretty easy. So we've got all of this in red and uh, it's telling us unexpected string. So for some reason we're starting a string here and it wasn't ready for a string because we didn't put the parentheses, so it's, it's, it's pretty easy. This one's not as obvious. Now, my font is pretty zoomed in here, and if you're viewing this full screen, you might have already noticed what the issue is. So, if I scroll up and you look at this code that ran just fine versus this code that wouldn't run, the only difference is actually these little quotation marks. So these are not really quotation marks. I mean, they are. We use them that way. They're what's on our keyboard. 
But when it comes to typography, they're not really quotation marks. They are meant for coding. And that's really all they're meant for. Now to save space, supposedly, according to the people at Fast Code Design, to save space, they didn't use the normal curly quotation marks that you would in typography on typewriters when those were first made. To save space, instead they used ones that were just straight up and down, just straight lines like we see in the code here. So that way you only need one button instead of two. Or only one hammer instead of two. One for the apostrophe and one for the quotation marks. Now the problem is when we move to computers and keyboards, even though space wasn't as much of an issue, we still have the same thing going on. And uh, it really bothers some people apparently because there's even a website that says that you shouldn't be using these types. You should actually be using these when you are writing something, when you're typing something, when you're designing something. And these should really only be used when you're coding in like CSS or JS or HTML or whatever. There is a way to actually use the proper ones pretty easily if you're on a Mac. But that, that doesn't really matter. The, the important thing, what I'm actually getting at, is some programs, Google Drive included, will actually do that for you so you don't have to worry about using the, the, uh, the dumb quotes, so to speak. The problem though is if you're trying to code and you're typing it in there, it might be giving you the wrong ones. It might not be giving you what you actually need. So you might need to do it in Notepad or something else and maybe just save it in here if you need to.